Pokemon Colosseum was by far one of my favourite games growing up. The beautiful graphics, constant double battles, the introduction of Shadow Pokemon, and a motorbike? Huh? Where else do we get a cool looking bike? Oh right, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Since these games came out, I was always curious to how Wes would do in the Paldea region, as we've been heavily deprived of a remake or even a port of Pokemon Colosseum, which came out nearly 10 years ago? Oh god, I'm so old! Wait, it's not 10 years, it's 20! Oh my god! <clears throat> well, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if Wes can beat Pokemon Scarlet. Now, how's this going to work? Well, essentially, if you can catch or obtain the Pokemon in Pokemon Colosseum, then I count these as encounters in Pokemon Scarlet. There are 48 Shadow Pokemon in Pokemon Colosseum, plus a few non-Shadows you can get your hands on. But out of all these encounters, the ones we can obtain are the 22 on screen now. Minus Sizzle, because I can't trade on this account because I'm not spending money. <laughs> we have some awesome Pokemon we can use, but I have set myself a few rules. This isn't a Nuzlocke, but I do want to add a bit of a challenge to this. So... I I can't use items in battle, I have to keep to the level cap of the next gym, boss or titan, and if a pokemon we catch can evolve into Sunken, in Scarlet and Violet but can't in Colosseum, then we can't use its new evolution. So no to Dunsparce, Honchkrow or Weavile. But with that being said, let's see if Wes can beat Pokemon Scarlet. I mean yeah that kind of looks like Wes. Close enough I guess. Our adventure starts off by a man breaking into our house, instructing us to leave him alone with our mum. We then go and grab our bag and hat ready for our adventure through Paldea and then What's this on the TV? It's a beautiful little segue into our starter Pokemon. Unfortunately, Wes doesn't get any of these Pokemon as this is like six generations later, but I would be curious to know which starter you think Wes would choose in the comments down below. We pick Foy Coco, name him please sub, which you should definitely do if you're enjoying the content as we do a ton of Pokemon stuff over here on the channel. And then we put Foy Coco in the box at the earliest opportunity. But we now finally run into our first actual encounter, a Hoppip. I'm actually gonna be naming all of these encounters after, well, you guys, anyone that's left a comment on the past few videos, anyone that's been supporting the channel, I'm going to be naming these Pokemon after you. But if I didn't name a Pokemon after you, it doesn't mean that I won't in the future. So make sure you leave a comment down below. We name Hoppip Crystal and she has a timid nature, which is up in speed and down in attack. That's not actually too bad and I'm happy with that. Fly tipping is getting ridiculous now. Someone's left their motorbike on the beach and these dogs are eating away at it. This is not good for the environment. So I casually fall to my death to go and save it. Turns out the bike belongs to this guy here and he just loves to trauma dump and gets really angry at us when we threaten to report him to the council for fly tipping. So he sends out this squirrel to fight our floating flower thing. I don't know what hop it is. <laughs> After a few tackles, Squovit goes down. And out of fear, Arvin lets us keep the bike. But the issue is we don't have our license here yet. Motorbike license aside, we run into our next encounter, a Bonsley. Now I know this is a pre-vote of Pseudo Wudo, but technically it evolves into Pseudo Wudo, so I'm allowing this as fair game. We catch her and name her Neon. She has a speed up and a special attack down nature, which isn't great, but does have the sturdy ability. We then find the motor outside of school and she has Sprigatito. We send out Crystal and after a few fairy wins, Sprigatito goes down. With Sprigatito down, we can send out Neon. Nimona sends out Pormi and then has a bright idea as a light bulb appears above its head. We go for a few flails and after a few thunder shocks, unfortunately Neon goes down. I'm so grateful that this isn't a Nuzlocke as this would have made the first gem extremely difficult. But we managed to switch into Crystal, outspeed the Pormi and take it out with a fairy wind. Does Wiz seem like the kind of guy that likes to go to school? No, probably not. So we're going to skip all that. But do you know what Wiz is into? Today's sponsor. Oh my god, that'd be a perfect segue. But if you could leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be great as well. Okay, moving on. The only plus side to going to school was we managed to get our motorbike license. And this isn't a model I'm familiar with. Why does it make that noise? <laughs> with the first gym being a bug type gym, there are a few encounters we're gonna need before we can take it on. First one being Raiden the Houndour. It has the ability flash fire and a defense up special defense down nature, which isn't too bad. Next up is Gabe the Mareep. Special attack up, special defense down with a static ability, and it's marked, what? Funny enough, this is not the only marked Pokemon we get in this run. Welcome Gabe the Cloud Watcher. Next up, we find this cute little guy, Eevee. We catch him in naming Grim and he has a neutral nature. We won't be using him until he evolves into Umbreon or Espeon, but I know I could catch another Eevee here, but I'm actually gonna wait until we get to Medali so we can get another Eevee in a separate area. 
just so I'm not overpowered so early on. Before we take on the gym, Gabe evolves from a Mareep into a Flaffy. This is going to be a nice little boost in power, although we probably won't be using it for this first gym. We kick the massive olive into a basket for the first gym's trial, and Katie starts out by sending out Nimble as we send out Neon. She goes for a struggle bug, barely doing anything to Neon, and then we go for a rock throw, taking it out in one hit. I, I don't know why, but that, that's a surprised me. <laughs> Tarantula's out next and goes for a bug bite, barely doing anything, as we go for a rock throw, barely not taking it out. Tarantula then hits us down to half of our HP with another bug bite, as we hit it with a rock throw, taking it out. Next time we send out Raiden, as Katie sends out Teddy Ursa. We both terastalize so I can get rid of my dark typing. We then go for a how to raise our attack, as we get hit by a fury cutter, but the next turn, Firefang takes Teddy Ursa out in one hit, winning us the first badge. At the end of the battle, Neon learns Mimic, which is the move it needs to learn, so it can evolve into Pseudo Udo. Roll that music. Shortly afterwards, Grim evolves from an Eevee into an Umbreon. This is great, this is like the peak of what Wes's team is. Now we're just missing Espeon. Now it's time to get our next encounter. Can you see where it is? No, it's not the poor me. It's actually this Makuhita. We catch him in name and Saiyan. He has a special defense up, speed down nature with thick fat, which isn't too bad. Gym 2's trial requires us to go and find 10 Sunflora. I don't know why, but we do it, and now it's time to take on Brassius. My guy, what are you doing on top of a windmill? Get down from there. Brassius starts out by sending in Petalil as we send in Raiden. We instantly terrestrialize and we go for a few howls as we get hit by Mega Drain. But then on the third turn, we manage to hit a Fire Fang, taking Petalil out. Smallif comes out next and faces the same fate as we go for a Fire Fang, taking it down. The fake tree then comes out next and turns into a real tree. We then go for a Fire Fang, but it misses and then we get hit by Rock's Road taking Raiden down. We send out Saiyan who goes for a fake out, not doing much at all. We then get hit by a trailblaze on the next turn, taking us down to 16 HP, and it raises Sudowoodo's speed as well. Our force palm does next to nothing as well. So I'm gonna let Saiyan go down so we can get a clean switch in. We send out Gabe the Cloud Watcher, who then gets hit by a Trailblaze, resulting in Pseudo Oda getting paralysed, which kind of sucks because I did go for Thunder Wave that turn. Gabe goes down, so we switch into Neon on the next turn. Luckily, Pseudo Oda gets paralysed, so we go for a Stone Edge, chipping away at his health. We go for another Stone Edge as we get lowered down to about half of our HP, and then on the following turn we get hit by another Trailblaze, leaving us on 1 HP, but we manage to take out Pseudo Wudo using Stone Edge. I'm really tired of our motorbike being stuck in first gear all the time, so I think it's time we upgrade. To do that, we need to take out Cloth, the Stony Cliff Titan. And honestly, it is super easy. We have Saiyan who can use fighting type moves, which takes care of the first phase super easily. The second phase goes just as easily. When Neon evolved into Sudo Wudo, it got access to some awesome moves. Stone Edge and Hammer Arm, and Hammer Arm made easy work of the first Titan. I mean, we done one, so why not do the next? Bombardier the Bird Titan is next, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it was super easy as well. Gabe the Cloud Watcher took out its first phase using a few Thunder Shocks, and then on the second phase, because we couldn't heal and Gabe was a bit low on HP, we switched out into Neon, and after a few Stone Edges, that's the battle done. To celebrate our victory, we run into a new encounter, a Lavatar. We catch her and name her Gentle Dudette. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been a supporter of the channel, you know, but it's a female, so gentle do that works. And oh my god, it has a gentle nature. <laughs> It was meant to be. It was just meant to be. It's time to take on Yakimo, who uses Dark type Pokemon. He starts off by sending in Pornyard, and we send out Raiden. We get hit with an Aerial Ace down to 22 HP, and then hit a Fire Fang. But on the next turn, we get hit by another Aerial Ace, taking Raiden out. We switch into Gentle Dude, who avoids a Metal Claw and hits a stomping tantrum, taking Pornyard out. Yakumo then sends out his car? I mean, come on, if we can't use our bike, why can he use his car? That doesn't seem fair. We go for a stomping tantrum as he misses a metal sound, but it does like next to nothing. We then get hit by a wicked torque, taking us down to 11 HP. We then hit back with stomping tantrum, but again, it does like next to nothing. One more wicked talk and gentle dudette goes down. We then send out Saiyan and we terrestrialize. We then get hit by a metal sound which harshly lowers our special defense. We go for a force palm and it hits to just above half. A swift from Starmobile takes us down to 22 HP and we hit back with force palm taking it to just under half. We then get hit by a snarl taking Saiyan down. We then switch out to Gabe who gets hit by metal sound and then we counter back using Thundershock which does decent damage. 
Time to rinse and repeat as we get hit by another metal sound and we go for another thunder shock. Even after two metal sounds, Gabe manages to survive on 12 HP from a snarl. But our special attack does get dropped so thunder shock doesn't do as much damage. Unfortunately, there isn't much we can do as we get hit by another snarl, meaning Gabe goes down. We send out Crystal, who gets hit by a metal sound, and we counter back using a soft aerial ace. The Star Mobile then hits us with snarl, taking us down to 25 HP, but we hit back with another aerial ace, barely not taking it out. We can't prevent the inevitable though, as a wicked talk takes Crystal down, leaving us with only Grim left. We get hit by a metal sound and we go for a covet, but it doesn't take it out. But on the next turn, because we have quick attack, we can outspeed, meaning we win the battle. God, that was so difficult. I'm so glad this isn't a Nuzlocke because we'd have no one left. <laughs> Before we take on Iono, Raiden and Saiyan both evolve into Houndoom and Hariyama. This is going to be some great bulk and definitely going to be useful for the future. It's time for gym number four and Iono sends out Watchel as we send out Neon. We get hit by a spark which doesn't do too much damage as we then counter back with Stone Edge taking Watchel out in one hit. Belly bolts out next and we stay in. We get hit by a water gun down to 27 HP as we then go for a stone edge doing about a quarter damage. But the next turn we get hit by an electromorphosis powered up spark, taking Neon down. Now I didn't really think this through but Gentle Dude is out next and we get hit by a water gun down to 6 HP but counter back with a stomping tantrum barely not taking it out. We switch and say on a soft water gun, then the next turn we go for fake out barely not taking it out but a knock off on the next turn takes it down. Luxio comes out next and we get hit with the Intimidate. We then get hit by a few sparks as we go for a few bulk ups and then we get paralyzed. Luckily we break through the paralysis and hit a brick break taking Luxio down. Miss Magius comes out next and it terrestrializes into a pure electric type. It then goes for a hex and because we're paralyzed it does a lot more damage. So Saiyan goes down. We send out Grim as Ms. Magius goes for charge beam, knocking us down to 69 HP. Nice. We then go for a foul play, only doing about a quarter damage. The next turn we then get hit by Confusory and of course Grim hits itself in confusion. We then get hit by another charge beam down to 43 HP, but manage to hit a foul play this time, taking Miss Magius to just under half. We tank another charge beam and then hit a foul play, taking it into the red, barely not taking it out, which means on the next turn we can hit a quick attack taking it out. And that's gym number four done. So there's actually only one way to get a Quagsire in Paldea, and that's to trade it with this NPC here. All you have to do is trade off a Paldean Whooper, and she gives you a Jotonian Whooper in return. So I'd like you to meet Manchester the Whooper. And yes, in reflection, I realize this would have been really good for the last gym, but hey, we move. On the way to the next team starbase, we run into a Meditite. We catch her and name her Bunny, and she has the pure power ability with a hasty nature, which is not too bad at all. Just in time to take on Mela, Wooper evolves into Quagsire. This is going to be super handy, as I've taught it Rain Dance, and the next team starbase is a fire type one. Now, what's my plan here? Well, to put it simply, Rain Dance and Surf. I set up Rain Dance to get rid of the drought, and then one Surf takes out Torkoal. And a few surfs later, Reverum Room goes down as well. I don't even have to terrestrialize. This battle was actually extremely easy. On our way to the next gym, we come across this massive worm. Subscribe to Pixelate. There's no issue for Raiden though, as after two incinerates, we knock it out of its first phase. And then, you know, as you do, you just knock down a cliff and then start eating some illegal drugs you find in the ground. I mean, this is normal, right? Regardless, Arvin has to be a part of everything, so he joins us in this battle, but we don't need his help as two Terra Incinerates takes down the Lurking Steel Titan easily. As we go to take on the fourth gym, the gym leader runs away. I guess Wes's reputation really gets around. Wes is so intimidating that the woman practically hands over Kofu's wallet to us. I mean, sure, I guess that will keep me away from him. But no, no, we're better than that. We find Kofu, return his wallet, and he asks us to win a bid for him we actually end up profiting from this. So, I mean, we take those, right? <laughs> but before we take on the gym, we need some new team members. Gabe, the mighty cloud watching Flaffy, evolves into an amazing Ampharos. This is perfect timing as this next gym is, well, water types. But I also come across an Eevee and you know what that means, right? We catch her in him as Sylvia. She has a relaxed nature. So, Let's evolve her. Finally, I've done so many picnics. I've ran around, I've played with her, but it's finally time to get our lovely S. What? Why, why is it Sylveon? I'm, I love Sylveon, but why? Wait, it's because it had a fairy type move on it? Oh, that is ridiculous. You know what? No, screw it. We're going to wait until after this gym. But do you know what? Can't wait until after this gym. Gentle Dudette evolving into Pupitar. 
Now this may be the quickest gym run of this whole entire video. We start off by sending out Grim, who tanks a pluck and then goes for a single foul play, taking out the Veluza. Wog Trio then comes out, so we switch into Gabe. We get hit by a headbutt making us flinch, but we do paralyze Wog Trio in the process. Even though Wog Trio is paralyzed, it still manages to outspeed us and hit us with a headbutt before we can take it out with an Electro Ball. Next out is Kofu's Ace Crab Bombard Crab Crab Big Crab. We terrestrialize and then go for a Zap Cannon and we actually hit it which means we take it out in one hit winning us the battle i told you this gym was just too easy i end up catching another eevee this one is male and it has a defense up special defense down nature but it is still called sylvia because i felt like it was only fair and this one actually evolves into espion yes we finally have the umbreon and espion duo that wes has just in time as well as we have to take on atticus of team star he starts out by sending in Scun Tank and we send in Gentle Dudette. We get poisoned by a Toxic but one earthquake later and Scun Tank goes down. So you remember that poison? Well that's no longer an issue because we have Shed Skin which is so awesome. Reverum then comes out next and we stay in but that was a big mistake as we get hit by an Iron Head knocking us out. We switch out into Raiden who hits an Incinerate but also gets hit by a Bulldoze down to 24 HP and lowers our speed. We try to go for an incinerate next turn, but because our speed has been lowered, we don't manage to do it and get out of sped and taken out. We send out Manchester, who tanks an assurance and then hits a mud shot taking River Room down. Atticus then sends out Muck, who hits a few sludge waves, but after a few Aqua Tails from Manchester, Muck goes down as well. The last Pokemon is the Starmobile. It hits us with a noxious torque down to 10 HP, but does end up poisoning us. We go for a mud shot, but it doesn't do a lot of damage as the poison takes Manchester out at the end of the turn. So we send out Sylvia next, who gets hit by a Noxious Talk and gets poisoned. We manage to hit a Psy Beam to just over half, but then on the next turn, Reverum hits a critical hit Noxious Talk, taking Sylvia down. We send out Gabe the Cloud Watcher as it gets hit by a Noxious Talk and poisoned. We do manage to get a Zap Cannon off though, taking it down to the yellow. We then manage to survive another Noxious Talk on 22 HP as we release another Zap Cannon, barely not taking out the Starmobile. On the following turn, we do get hit by Noxious Talk again, taking Gabe down, leaving only Grim yet again. But because Grim is a tank, we take a Noxious Talk easily and finish the Starmobile off with a foul play. Bro, come on, calm down, it's not that deep. All right, I'm getting a bit peckish, so I think I'm gonna grab a double Big Mac, fries, a McFlurry and a chocolate shake, please. What do you mean, no? Wait, why is the floor swallowed up all these people? I don't want to fight. Oh, fine, fine. Okay, looks like we're doing gym number five. Larry sends out Kamala as we send out Bunny. We go for a false palm and manage to get a critical hit, taking Kamala out in one hit. The Duns pass is out next, and we go for another force palm, but don't even do half as Hyper Drill manages to hit and takes us down in one shot. We then send out Manchester, who tanks a Hyper Drill so it doesn't even do half, and then we go for a yawn, meaning that on the next turn, the Duns pass will go to sleep. We then tank another Hyper Drill, taking us down to 25 HP, but we do hit back with an Earthquake, taking Dun Dun Spars down to about a quarter. At the end of the turn, the Duns pass falls asleep thanks to the yawn, and then on the next turn, we can obliterate with an aqua tail larry then sends out star raptor as we switch into gabe we do get hit by an intimidate but luckily we're a special attacker so that won't make a difference both gabe and star raptor terrestrialize we then get hit by a facade taking us to just under half as we go for a zap cannon but end up missing facade on the next turn then takes out gabe so we switch into grim who tanks a facade as we go for a confuse ray star raptor then hits itself in confusion as we hit a foul play taking it to just under half of its hp but on the following turn we do get hit by a facade down to 21 hp but counter back with a foul play, taking Staraptor out and winning us badge number five. I was going to skip over this, but I think it would be more satisfying to beat Nimona. <laughs> Hit me up for any voice acting roles. <laughs> On the way to the 6th gen, we run into a Sneasel. We catch him and name him It's RJ. I didn't actually find this out until later, but it turns out RJ has a mark as well. Meaning this Sneasel is called It's RJ the Radiant. Before we take on the gym, Bunny evolves into a Medicham. Can we take a second to appreciate that this guy looks exactly like the OG YouTuber Justin Flynn? What the hell? <laughs> gym leader number 6 is Rhyme, and she uses the doubles format, and I think it would have been so cool if we could have done this whole run in doubles, because it would have been just like Colosseum. But alas, we can't. Rhyme starts out by sending in Bayonet and Mimikyu, and we send out Gabe and Manchester. My reason for doing this is because Gabe has Discharge, and we gave Gabe the Air Balloon, so that Manchester can hit Earthquakes, so we can hit both sides equally as hard without taking any damage from each other. 
That means we can take out Bayonet easily and then break Mimikyu's disguise and get it down to half HP. Houndstone then comes out next and we get hit by a slash popping Gabe's air balloon which is a good thing we didn't go for Earthquake, but we do go for Discharge as Houndstone goes for Phantom Force, meaning it avoids the Discharge, but we manage to take Mimikyu out. Toxtricity then comes out next and Terastalizes, which is a big mistake on my behalf because if I had Terastalized first, then I would have got the Omni Boost, but unfortunately, Ryan gets the Omni Boost at the end of the turn. Hyper Voice hits us for a soft hit, but then we go for a Discharge, paralyzing Toxtricity, and Houndstone gets paralyzed on impact from Phantom Force. Manchester then hits an Aqua Tail, barely not taking Houndstone out. Toxtricity then gets paralyzed, so it can't attack that turn, so we hit a Discharge, taking out Houndstone, and barely not taking out Toxtricity. Even though it's paralyzed, somehow Toxtricity avoids Manchester's Aqua Tail. I don't get it. But she can't prevent the inevitable as one more discharge takes out Toxtricity. What a shocking victory, am I right? <laughs> All jokes aside, if you have made it this far into the video, I just want to say I genuinely appreciate all of you and the support you have given me. After this video has come out, it would have been just over a month since I started uploading on this channel and it's been great. Loads of you have been really supportive, a lot of comments, a lot of likes, a lot of kind words and I just want to say thank you so much and I hope I can continue making awesome content. Soppiness aside, we have the great task to deal with and because of Sylvia, this is such an easy task. It is part fighting type, so Psychic takes the first phase out super easy, and then two Psychics later in the second phase, and that's it. Great task is dealt with. Pokemon did not need to go this hard with this character. She is a goddess. I would absolutely let her stay. Tulip sends out Furigaraf as we send out Gabe the Cloud Watcher. We get hit by a Zen Headbutt to just above half, but then counter back using Thunder Wave. We hit a Discharge taking us to just above half. We then get hit by a Zen Headbutt taking us down to 58 HP. On the following turn, we hit a Zap Cannon taking Furigaraf out. Gardevoir is out next, so we switch into Sylvia, who hits a Shadow Ball to just under half. We then get hit by a critical hit Dazzling Gleam, taking us to low health, but we outspeed the next turn and manage to hit a Shadow Ball, taking Guard of War out. Espathro is out next, so we switch into RJ. We get hit by a quick attack, but manage to get a foul play in, doing a big chunk of damage. Another quick attack takes us down to 71 HP, but a foul play takes Espathro out. Tulip sends out Flora just last, and we switch into Grim. We both terastalize, but after two foul plays, Flora just goes down, winning us gym badge number seven. Before we take on the last gym, there's something we need to do. It's now time to take on Grusha. He starts off by sending in Frostmoth as we send out Raiden. We terastalize and then go for an Incinerate, taking Frostmoth out in one hit. Beartick comes out and we go for a Terra boosted Incinerate, but it's not quite enough as Beartick survives on a little bit of HP and then goes for an Earthquake, taking Raiden down. But it's not a massive issue as RJ is able to outspeed and go for a Metal Claw, taking Beartick down. So Titan's out next and we get a few Metal Claws in, taking it to around half, but a few liquidations absolutely destroys RJ. So we send out Bunny who gets a few fire punches in taking the titan low but doesn't quite manage to take it out as it gets taken out itself by ice spinner but it's not an issue for grim as he comes in goes for a quick attack and takes the titan down altaria's last to come out and we obviously send out gabe the cloud watcher as altaria is a cloud and gabe's watching him Altaria then terastalizes and hits us with a Dragon Pulse down to 103 HP as we counter back with a Thunder Wave. We then launch a Zap Cannon hitting it to just above half as it counters back with an Ice Beam taking us down to the yellow. We manage to hit another Zap Cannon leaving Altaria on a slither as it hits back with Ice Beam taking us out. We send Grim back out and isn't it weird how Grim's always the one that comes back out to save the day? But regardless he goes for a quick attack taking Altaria out and winning us badge number eight. Hey, we did it, we beat every gym in Paldea. But there's still a few things left to do. So let's upgrade the team. We find a fortress and name her Mazar. She has a sturdy ability with a special defense up and defense down nature, which isn't ideal as I'd like it the other way around, but hey, we may do. We then come across a Heracross who we catch and name Culper. He has a hardy nature, which means it's neutral, which is pretty good. We're not quite done yet though, as we come across an Altaria who we catch and name Mio. And Mio has a hasty nature, but it also has a title, which is so awesome. Mio the Serene. So my plan here is to use Gabe. Gabe can use electric type moves on Dondozo, but it can also use Dragon Pulse on Tatsugiri. And that's pretty much exactly what we do, especially with terastalizing. It just makes this whole process so much easier. So we go for a Terra boosted Zap Cannon, and that's Dondozo's first phase down. Arvin joins us for the second phase as we go for two Terra boosted Thunderbolts, taking Dondozo down. But that still leaves Tatsugiri. But honestly, it's really not an issue as a few Dragon Pulses and a takedown from Arvin's Greedent takes care of it, meaning we've beaten every Titan in Paldea. And I, I mean, you know, Wiz doesn't cry, but it doesn't mean I can't. <laughs> 
this scene is actually so heartwarming this is probably like the most i felt in a pokemon game this is such a nice touching scene but we don't have time for tears as Ortega needs dealing with. He starts off by sending in Azumarill as we send in Gabe. And we zap it with a Thunderbolt taking it out in one hit. Marza then comes out and takes care of Wigglytuff using a few Gyrobores and a double edge. Gabe isn't messing around as we go for a Thunderbolt getting a critical hit on the dash button taking it out in one hit. The last Pokemon out is the car. <laughs> Still can't get over that. We manage to tank a few hits and get a few Thunderbolts in doing some big damage but end up missing a zap cannon, meaning that the Starmobile can take us out. But Mazar comes back in and hits a few double edges, meaning we can take the Starmobile out. That leaves only one Team Star member left. But before we do that, Gentle Duda unlocks her final form, Tyranitar. Aerie is the last of Team Star, she sends out Toxicroak, and I send out Sylvia. Now I have a bit of a plan here. Because we sent out a Psychic type, I know that Toxicroak is going to go for Sucker Punch. So if we get rid of all of Toxicroak's Sucker Punches by using Protect, even if the Protect doesn't work, it can't hit us. And then we can take it out with a Psychic. On reflection, it probably would have been smarter if we set up using Calm Mind, but I didn't have Calm Mind on Sylvia, which is a mistake on my behalf. We switch out to Raiden as Airy sends out Lucario. I miss click and go for Thunderfang, but actually it pays off as it gets paralyzed and doesn't move that turn. So we go for a flamethrower on the following turn, taking Lucario out. Persimion's out next, so we switch back into Sylvia, hit a Psychic, and take Persimion out in one hit. This is actually going so much better than I would have thought. Aerie then sends out Annihilate, and we switch into Culpa. We take a Fire Punch and then hit an Aerial Ace to just over half. But we stay in and then get hit by another Fire Punch, taking Culpa out. Sylvia isn't happy with that, so he comes in and uses a Psychic to take Annihilate down. Aerie's last Pokemon is River Room, and after two Psychics, it goes down. And that was really easy, actually. But that's as easy as it gets, as it's time to take on the Elite Four. But on reflection, this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And I'm not going to waste your time, but we managed to take out Rika really easily, take out the small child, put Larry back in his place, and then take down Hassel. Now, considering this is meant to be the champion of champions, I'm actually really underwhelmed. Gita sends out Aspathra as we send out Raiden, and after two foul plays, Aspathra goes down. Raiden then makes easy work of Avalog and King Gambit by going for a terror boosted flamethrower taking them both out in one hit. With the loser out next, Gabe manages to tank a liquidation and then go for a thunderbolt taking that out as well. Culpa then absolutely destroys Gogo with a mega horn taking it out in one hit. With Glamora out last, Gentle Dudek goes for an earthquake after tanking an earth power and takes Glamora down, winning us the champion title. That really wasn't too difficult, but the journey isn't over yet. Now that we're champions, Nomona really wants to test our strength. This is probably one of the most important rival battles in Pokemon history and... Oh, well, that was easy. Oh, come on, don't cry. You're making me feel bad. Clive now wants to fight us and... Oh my god, it's Clavel? What a surprise. I, I definitely didn't see this coming. Oh my god, wow. Time to fight. <laughs> 10 out of 10 voice acting. Turns out Penny was lying to us the whole time as she's Cassiopeia. What? I'm so surprised. I'm, I'm really not surprised at all. Penny has a team of evolutions, so let's rate them out of 10 as we destroy them. 8 out of 10, cool colorway, best boy. 6 out of 10, fluffy tail, but at least used by me. 6 out of 10, cool concept, but not very good move pool. 6.9 out of 10, you know why. 8 out of 10, very cool spiky boy, but not Sylveon. 10 out of 10, has pretty bows. Don't strop Penny. Maybe if you have a team of Sylveons next time, you might actually win. Now that Arvin's Mabostiff is fully back to health, he challenges us to a battle. And surely we wouldn't put Mabostiff back in any pain, right? You need to be. All right, I'm going, I'm going. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess! I don't know how we did it, but somehow we are now in the last battle of Pokemon Scarlet versus AI Sada. And this is going to be hard. That's what she said. <laughs> Why am I like this? <laughs> Sada then sends out Slitherwing as we send out Sylvia the Espeon. And a single psychic takes Slitherwing down. With Fluttermane out next, we switch into Mazar, who gets hit by a mystical fire down to its sturdy. But we counter back with a heavy slam taking out in one hit. Brute Bonnet then comes out next, so we switch into Culper. But before we can get a Mega Horn off, we get hit by Sucker Punch. Not doing too much, but a Mega Horn takes Brute Bonnet down. Sada then sends out Screamtail, and after a few Shadow Balls from Sylvia, it goes down as well. 
Sandy Shocks comes out next, but it's no issue for Manchester as we tank an Earth Power and then counter back with an Earthquake, taking it down in one hit. Sada's last Pokemon is Roaring Moon, so we switch out to Sylvia with low HP, hoping it would outspeed, but we don't and it gets taken out by a Night Slash. So we switch out to Culper, who terastalizes for the final time, hoping we can get a Mega Horn in. We tank a Dragon Claw and we can go for a Terra Boosted, Swarm Boosted Mega Horn, taking Roaring Moon out and winning us the battle and also winning us the run. This video was a ton of fun and if you want to see more make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye!